In the early spring of 2017, comedy bad boy Joe Hartzler recorded the final episode of the first season of his rarely watched internet series, Acting Tips. His guest that day, Alana Johnston. A friendly interview quickly turns into an actor's worst nightmare, where old wounds are laid bare, and things aren't always what they seem. What happens when an actor is pushed to the brink? And how far would one mod team go to continue doing a monthly skit show for free for years? This episode and the events discussed are rumored to have haunted the reclusive funny man, some say to madness. What follows is a disturbing tale as we open the Jerkules file. Got your back. And now, the series finale of Acting Tips, a special two-part presentation with special guest Alana Johnston and a soon-to-be-named mystery guest. Please enjoy the Jerkules file. Got your back. The talent to keep believe on our show. Have you ever been paid for an audition? Um, not in this country. All that. Do you get paid elsewhere? Yeah, in Canada, where I'm from, um, you get. Uh, I think it's like fifty bucks for callbacks. It's Are you kidding me? No, I'm not. In Canada, <laughs> they pay. You. Yes. I'm so glad to hear this. Oh, I'm sorry, I just shouted it. In I've moment. never gotten one, but uh, well, I've gotten one. So I did get that 50 bucks. They pay you for callbacks in Canada, yeah. folks. Right now, you're gonna take and you're gonna write on here, food, gas, or shelter, you're gonna tell us what you're gonna put that $20 towards. You're gonna feed your actor mouth, you're gonna put gasoline in your actor tank to drive to your next audition, or you're gonna put this money towards shelter so that you don't sleep outside in a gutter like so many actors do. You want me to write it down? Food. What are you gonna put this toward, po poutine? Yeah, I love poutine, but no, actually, you guys don't make it right here. You guys call it disco fries. Me and my buddies used to do uh, some disco fries occasionally. That's where you poured uh, cocaine on your french fries. We do it a little differently. We put gravy. Huge waste of cocaine. Okay. She's going to put poutine in her actor mouth to yeah. keep going for another day. Yeah. Do you get sick of that Canadian shit? Yeah. Welcome back to the show. Nice. And Please, it, pretend this isn't here. I wanted to get a new angle of the show. Oh, yeah. People can feel what it feels like as I interview these famous actors and actresses. I'm very famous, yes, very famous. Very famous. I do have these Crocs on because I have not a bunion, which is on your big toe. I have apparently a bunionette, which is what's on your baby toe. What? I also <laughs> didn't wear makeup because I thought this was a hangout. So, <laughs> so no. everyone I'm really beautiful. <laughs> you look fantastic. This is a, you, you woke up like this? Up. I woke up like this. Maybe you can post, if you do the posting of this, um, like my headshot or like a, a nicer shot of me, I can send you something. I just want people to know what the possibilities are. So you have if different looks? Look. Yeah, this one and then one with makeup. Talk a little bit more about that. Okay, so you're doing the Canadian thing. What's this now, eh? <laughs> Wait, that wasn't... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what you are saying! Alana. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show, by the way. <laughs> no you have to go to work today? Yeah. You're an actor. What set are you working on? I'm not on set today. Today I'm going to a fashion job. A fashion job? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So wait, wow, you're that'd be cool. an actor and yeah, you- I'm, I wouldn't call, yeah, okay, I'm an actor. And you also, what would you call yourself? Well, I'd say comedian. I feel like I can't act to save my life. So how much do you get paid to be a comedy comedian? When you do a not too shabby show, what are they- Oh, nothing. What, what cut- Did you not know that about the UCV? What, wait, what cut are you taking to the door? Um, no cut. The door's free, so I guess I'm taking the cut of attendance. Well, okay, what about when you do a show where uh, the audience pays five bucks? Nothing. Wait, wait, wait. See, when you were on like a mod team... I'm still on a mod team. So you have a coach? Uh, director, yeah. What do you, what do you pay in a director? Oh my god, like 40 bucks a month. So how much does that... To be told to uh, be a little more subtle. Wait, but how much is that for you? Zero dollars. Pay to play. Right? For what? Wait, for who? No, no, no. How much do you pay of the forty dollars? I pay the full forty dollars. So wait, you're paying everybody pays the forty. Wait, and how much is the audience paying to get to get in? It's like five bucks. Right? Five 
right? So the people watching the show have paid five bucks and the people doing the show have paid 40 bucks? Yeah, I think I'm gonna go bankrupt trying to do comedy live. Can I just ask you something real quick? I insist. What the f I know. Here's the problem though. It's hard to be too upset about it because if I didn't do those shows, I wouldn't have the opportunities I have. So it's very frustrating. So it's almost like as an actor, it? you're just expected to work for free, huh? I, in a live show, yes. But yeah. because of those shows, I've done some tours, so I've made some money in other places. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let me get back to this question that I ask every person that comes on the show, okay? Okay. I want you to think about this. I, I'm pretty cool. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's the question. <laughs> Okay, let me just, okay, let me say this. I think physically you're cool because you can do a lot of different things. Like y you have two BMX bikes, but you're also doing a show in like a garage and it's like 10 a.m. So I'm like, I guess you're cool in that way, it, it, in the physical way. I don't know. I don't know if in real life, if I don't, didn't know you from comedy, if I'd be like, he's cool. You're wearing a Canadian tuxedo, you're in head to toe denim. I just don't know if I could say you're cool. Like, if what? I saw you on the street, I wouldn't look twice. But I think you're cool because I know you. What did everybody else say? I mean, most of these people are being nice and saying yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. No. You don't think this is cool? This is a nice shirt. It's, it's cool, but like, it's kind of cool. What's not cool about my life? You have so many BMX bikes. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that counts for the cool side. I wish you guys side. could see all this stuff. I don't know. I'm Okay, so you're paying 40 bucks to paying yeah. 40 bucks a month. The audience is coming in. They're, they're paying five bucks. Yeah. You know what I would almost say? Right. It almost seems cheaper to be the audience. But it's less fun. Is it? Yeah. A lot of fun. Lots of Being fun. On stage hey, is we were so on a mod team. Fun. We were on a mod team, my very first mod team, and I loved it. Those I were the loved day. That it. was great, right? Yeah. How'd that end? You threw a fit <laughs> and you quit right before. Wait, 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 wait. Get the story right, though. Okay. An email about you that you weren't supposed to see was sent. What happened before that? What well, should happen before that? Exactly. This is a part of the story that <laughs> nobody ever touches on no it's that you didn't um know your lines and you were drinking during the first show that we did in a three-part show remember crown royale yeah because the and prop on stage was uh real but was you real. decided to drink it but everybody could see me pouring this prop right but you didn't have to sip it like that you got drunk dude that's uh, the story that's what happened that's interesting what happened. oh yeah interesting that's what that is to me what i remember happening so you were wonky online. So why did someone bring a real alcohol prop on stage and give why it to me? Why did you choose to drink it? Everything's a choice. Because everyone watched as I poured a drink, but and that was the. Why did you take like little sips? Because the audience was laughing. Okay. You see how much fun it is to be on stage. <laughs> you got to give the audience what they want. I mean, uh, the audience okay. wanted a show with proper lines. But I feel like there was only one flub in that show, and to like. It was you. Okay. All right. Listen. I don't agree with what happened and how it went down. Me, I, I, you're, you're worth any drop line. You, you are uh, without question one of my favorite people to play with. You're worth any drop line. I don't know if I can say that everybody else feels that way. I'm also a force to be reckoned with, so not Ooh. much can shake me. Can I tell you what, what I felt uh, I happened? Would, honest to God, we've never talked about this. Yeah. I would love to This actually is actually hear. interesting. This is the first time that I ever heard about the issue with the uh, pouring the drink on stage. I couldn't think of another reason why that email was sent. I couldn't think of another reason. That was my only guess as to why it was sent. Interesting. And I was so upset when that happened. But I don't think it mattered because you were on there with Jack. Interesting. So we were on this team and I was, I was paying my monthly fee. Pay to play. To perform. <laughs> and I think it should also be noted that during this time I was also performing on Herald Night. Yeah. Oh, you were, ma and Harold was and twice a week, you were maxed out, dude. So I was practicing uh, Mod Night, I was practicing Harold Night, I was performing at Harold Night, I was performing at Mod Night. It got upped from when I first got asked, also I never auditioned to join Mod, I got asked to join Mod, and so I did. Oh, wow. When I first joined, it was only uh, 
two shows every three months, and then it got up to every month. So I think I felt a, a spread a little thin. Yeah. And we still, it's interesting that, see, no one remembers what happened, right, what spurred that email. Leading up to it, it had probably been a year of me feeling like yeah. totally stressed. Every time I walked into the room, I could feel like people had been talking about me. So I was like getting all these vibes from the group. I could tell like I was on the outs okay. with a few of the writers. And so it started to be like totally not fun for me to show up. Right. It took me a while to realize that I was just purely stretched too thin, that I couldn't yeah. be doing that much free work and still be a sane human. And we weren't on the out, you and I, we were hanging out all yeah. the time in Scott and, we and Dave here and stuff. Like we were, that's what we made were all it. still having fun during that time. I think that's what kept a lot of us around. I know for I sure love the that performance group. of some of the writers, we were having a good time. I still love all the writers. I, I love yeah, everyone. But too. I was feeling too stressed out. And I always talk about this time that I was like racing to get back to a rehearsal and I was like, my mom was out visiting and I like cut that time short yeah. to get to a rehearsal because my that. mod team would be mad. I remember that. About this time, I had to miss, I missed a mod rehearsal to go to do another show somewhere. Right. And I just sent an email like, listen, I'm not going to make it to this. God, I don't remember that. To this rehearsal. And I knew people were going to be pissed, but I was like, I did another show. I'm tired. I'm just, I'm not going to go spend now two hours doing yeah. this rehearsal and so I said I can't make it and then immediately Jack got back to me oh man people were pissed you know and talking shit and so then I sent the email hey gang thanks it's been great but I'm gonna bow out of mod this is gonna be my last show because I was just done I was like uh, yeah. this isn't fun for me I'm over it then the email came hey guys sorry but this is gonna be a rant Joe's email makes me so annoyed. It's obnoxious, unprofessional, and babyish. I respect you all dearly, but the feeling is not mutual. Give me a fucking break. I have zero issue with him leaving if he's going to do it like this. Or does he really want to leave? Is this just other classic Joe plea for attention? I feel like Joe has been a negative influence on our team and our shows for the past year. He doesn't learn his lines. He doesn't act professional. He seriously tanked our last show and it's not the first time his indulgences have ruined a sketch. I spoke with about this at the end of last year because I feel it's gone too far. Joe is very talented, but I don't feel that outweighs the negative. We definitely shouldn't be trying to keep him on this team if he wants to leave and this is the way he's going about it. I know a lot of you guys are friends with Joe and I'm sorry if this comes off harsh. But I just feel like I'm at my last straw with this dude. I love our team and I want our shows and our experience on the team to be the freaking best and I feel like Joe is negatively affecting all of it. Sent from my iPhone. That's what you're forgetting. Here's what else you're forgetting. You weren't the only problem at the time. I'm paying to perform at these shows. I'm not getting paid. I've been doing this for years. I'm burnt out. I've realized I'm fucking up. I tried to bow out and just be like, okay, I, I can't do this. Yeah. Which, reading the email was really the best thing that could have ever happened. It was great. Because it set you free? Doesn't everyone sort of secretly want to read what everyone thinks about them? And then it finally went like, aha, yeah, no wonder this wasn't fun. It felt like we were all losing something that we loved, but maybe that we didn't know that we should keep fighting for. Mm. I personally we got graduated. hated that. We got graduated. We were the first team to graduate to the grave. It's a, it's a disaster. I was given the offer to join another mod team when we were like graduated. Mm -hmm. And I said no. Because I was like, I'm loyal to we this were doing team our to the thing, end. Yeah. And then we just fell apart. And I was like crushed. It had I to never happen. resented you at any point because I just had more energy because I was new. I had so much to prove. You guys were already top dogs there. I, I love hearing this other side of it because it was so... This was Confusing. the this was the beginning of me starting to feel like I was being exploited a little bit. Wasn't like, it good that it all kind of fell apart because you weren't necessarily liked as a performer. It um, needed to end. motivate you to make life changes. You changed yeah. in the best way possible, yeah. and now you're like the best version of yourself in a yeah. garage. I was miserable. Blessing in disguise. You were miserable, dude, but you didn't want to let us down either. Cause yeah. It's like, Whatever drama was happening in those rehearsals, the second that show came, it was like, oh my god. Yeah, we you, loved the performing. The audience loves you. We love performing. They love you. You weren't necessarily liked as a performer. Here's what also I think I was feeling was as a comedian, I was growing beyond. I wanted to create my own shit. What I go on to do in the next, in the 
years after it was I created my own show and I did my own thing and it was like well, super after that rewarding. Happened, you were out of that building. You were like pretty much making like a bow out of like I have to go do these other things. Yeah. Because the next time you kind of came back around was Trophy Case. But it was your show. It wasn't that um, establishment giving you something. It was you giving them something. It was very different. Very different. Yeah, and if I was doing mod now, it would be completely different. I would, I could never do it again. Yeah, I'm not going to pay it was, to do comedy. I'm still okay with doing it. I'm on a very, I'm on a drama-free team, and if it weren't for our team, um, I wouldn't be able to feel that way because now I'm like, I'm just appreciating the ride. I'm always going to be a live performer, but it's like, I can feel I've switched focus to doing my own stuff too because. At some point, a stage can't hold you anymore. At some point, you're like, oh, I need more. It sure. has to be all about me. And that I know that yeah. sounds like very narcissistic or something like that, but it's like, well, then what the fuck else am I doing? If I'm not in it for me, what the fuck else am I in it for? Yep. <laughs> a job for me is a job for all, man. I can't sit in a casting office and hope somebody else gives me a career. That's madness. Not for somebody like me who's never gotten a callback. <laughs> never. Are you serious? I'm dead serious, but I've, I've worked so many gigs and all of them were direct offers. And it's wow. because of the years I put in yeah. those live shows. And you're a pro. It's like 10.30 a.m. I've already worked on three shows this morning. I remember when you entered our mod team, and I remember it made all of us step up our game because you like set the bar higher. Oh, wow. That's a huge compliment. You weren't necessarily liked as a performer. I will say this. The current state of UCB, I think, is great. You're People, paying 40 bucks a month? You're paying, well, listen, I'm having the time of my life, if okay. I'm being honest. And all it's right. Like, what else am I going to do with my time? You tell me. And it does what make connections like do? this. And it makes these connections. And it's like, how else am I going to get in a couple garages at 11 a.m.? Boom. You want to put this on? Should you wear it for a little bit? Maybe yeah, they okay. want a POV. Yeah, okay. my hair. Oh, I don't care who's seen me. Can I ask you to read what a troll said to me once online? Yeah. Oh, this will be some good acting for me. I've been having our guests read because I'm going to respond to this troll. Okay. Jump up your own butt and choke on hot farts. And then it's a... The face is the most haunting part of the message. What, what does the face mean? I would have done like this, the dead one because your farts kill me. The ghost oh. one. I like the ghost one. Somebody said that to you. I'm going to write back. You have your mother make yourself a fart sandwich and you slice that thing in half and toss yourself a stinky log on there and you eat that and wash that down with a tall glass of turds. Oh, that's much better than what my initial response was going to be. And then you... Uh, choke on it. it seems quite long-winded. Yeah. Man, I can't believe I got drunk during that show. Is what is what the story now is. <laughs> Dude, I'm telling you. I got myself what? blacklist listed forever. Yeah. That's the thing. If you uh, uh, here's another acting tip: one false move and you're done. I disagree. You get a reputation that you're crazy when really maybe you're just holding Caulfield smarter than these phonies. I think people think I'm crazy. Yeah, but in a good way, in a fun way. I'm a fun crazy. <laughs> crazy like a fox. I guess. I don't know. Thanks for being on the show so yeah. much. I was wondering if you wanted to wrestle me, but I don't think we have time to do it. I don't think we have time to do it, but... Um, I'm going to bring a, you back. I do have a final thought. Yeah? I want to really... I want to thank you for having me on this show that I thought was a hangout. And I want to say I feel really at peace with hearing your side of it. And I'm actually quite proud of you for the way that you turned your life around afterwards when you could have gone the other way and you could have gone deeper in. Yeah, I picked up the pieces. I'm really proud And I of made you. all of this. And I think you're an eligible bachelor. I asked you about an hour and a half ago if you were dating anyone. I didn't get an answer, but I nah. just want you to know if you're not, um, you, you deserve someone great. The question is, does she deserve you? Yeah. Elena what Johnson. Hey, we're going to give you 20 bucks for being on the show. What's your Venmo? Let's do it right here. Wow, great. 20, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. <laughs> I'm going broke making, making the show. Oh, do you have any acting tips? Yeah, whatever you do, don't be myself. What? Well, it's not working being me. Everyone's no. like, be yourself. It's not working, so don't be myself. Don't be self-deprecating right now. You... Oh, that's a good tip. Don't be self-deprecating. Don't take my tip. You are one of the most talented and professional actors I know. You know the business. You hustle. You work hard. You do live shows. You're paying to play. And in, in play, you are. The audience loves it. They're shouting, turn her loose. <laughs> turn her loose, they shout. Alana. Do you have any acting tips for us? Keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. Yeah. <laughs> Elena Johnson, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> <So good. laughs>